Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Biblical hospitality is about honoring Yah and loving other Israelites by obeying the command to contribute to the needs of the saints and to seek and to show hospitality. Yeshua did this by washing the feet of his disciples, right? By feeding the hungry, by healing the sick, and even by reproducing these things in the lives of his disciples. Again, let's take a look at our, our father Abraham and let's check out what he did, right? We're going to go uh, to Genesis 18 and 1. I'm trying to slow down. Am I going too fast for y'all, Israel? Hallelujah. This is uh, Genesis 18 and 1. And it says, Yahweh appeared unto him in the plains of memory, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes, and he looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and he bowed himself toward the ground. So you check that out. You think about that, right? So here's, here's our father Abraham. So he's in his, in his, in his tent door, and he see. You know, these men are off in the far. So he goes and runs to them. He goes in to meet them. You think about us, even when we know that people coming over our house or, or we know that we're going to have guests or something, what we do? How many times we sit in the door waiting for them or we go out to meet them? Now we wait, we sit there until they come knock on the door. We know they're coming. And then we'll go out once they, once they knock on the door, right? But he's showing us differently how he, 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 was waiting, he was at the door, but then he ran out to go and meet them, right? And listen to what he's saying that he did. In verse 2, he says that he lift up his eyes and he looked and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them for the tent door from, from the tent door. And he bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, my master, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray you, from your servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. So think about this. How many times do we uh, run and fetch water when people come over to, to, to visit us or, we, or we, we meet with people, right? And uh, how many times do we do that? Honestly, maybe we might do it here and there, but how many times are we really thinking like this? You know, at their, at, at their uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, at their, yeah, at their service. Hallelujah. How many times do we do these things? But listen to this. It says, uh, verse 5, it says, And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you, your hearts. After that, you shall pass on. For therefore, are you come to your servant? Are they? And they said, so do as you have said. So they agreed. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah. And he said, make ready quick three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes unto the heart. And Abraham ran unto the, the herd, and he fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and had him hasten to dress it. So he knew the severity of it. He knew who was in his present, right? He knew who he was dealing with, right? So you think about it. Although when we deal with one another, do we actually hasten, you know, to get things prepared and to do unto us, uh, uh, each other like that? 
See, if we looked at each other as, you know, this is, this is a child of God. This is my brother. This is an Israelite. If we looked at each other in that light, how much better would we treat each other, right? And so he knew who he was dealing with off top. He knew it. And so that's why he hastened to get everything right. Is that right? You know, whenever we do things for each other, no matter what it is, how big or how small, you know, whether we're here during the feast and it's a large gathering or it's a small gathering in the home or whatever, whatever we do uh, one for another, it, it is it's clear that if you put a lot of your, your heart into it, uh, care and time, you can sense that even in the outcome of the, the food, in the outcome of just being around in each other, the fellowship, right? You know, I heard this once before, and I was young. I heard uh, uh, it was my aunt, and she said, you know, when I go to these restaurants, if they got an attitude and all of this, it just messes up the food, and, and the food don't even taste right. It's just horrible. I didn't understand what she was saying at the time. I'm a child. All I want to do is eat. But now I'm older now. I understand. Com I comprehend much better, you know, and especially when we're doing things for Israelites, right? We, we have to be careful how we do things. We can't just throw things together for them, right? We have to take time and prepare. Even if it's at the spur of the moment, somebody pop up or, you know, somebody need us. We got to do it and do it without grudging. Is that right? Hallelujah. Just as Abraham knew who it was that he was dealing with, we should be the same way and we should always keep that in mind. But you know what? We look at, 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 at one another, whatever it is. I don't know if it's, we're looking at shortcomings, we're looking too much, too much into the flesh. But instead of looking at who this is, Right? We're not, we don't give our all or we don't put forth our best effort. Hallelujah. But uh, moving on from there, um, verse um, 8, verse 8, it says, And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. All right? First Peter 4, 9 through 11. It says, Welcome one another without grumbling. So without any kind of murmuring, without any kind of secret displeasure, welcome one another. Hallelujah. As each one has received a gift, serve one another as good trustees of the manifold favor of Elohim. If anyone speaks, let it be as the words of Elohim. If anyone serves, let it be as with the strength which Elohim provides, so that Elohim might be praised in it all through the Messiah to whom the loan, the esteem and the rule forever and ever. Hallelujah. All right, so I read pretty much, so the, we're going on talking about the stranger here, right? Because the Most High never wanted us to forget that we were strangers. We were one strangers in Egypt, right? The stranger says those of a different nation who desire to dwell among us and be circumcised and obey the law of Yah. You yourself was a stranger in a foreign land. Hallelujah. It says here, Exodus twenty two twenty one, 21. It says, thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Also, you shall not oppress a stranger for you know the heart of a stranger, right? Seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. How many times do we really think about that? Like, let's just be real. Do you ever consider the, the harsh treatment? Do you ever consider what our people went through? Hard bondage in Egypt. Do you ever consider that and think about that? I think that's why the Most High is trying to get us to remember that and keep that in our minds, right? So we know that. So we don't do that to other people. So, you know what I mean? And especially that we don't do it to each other. Hallelujah. You know, we all come from you know, different backgrounds, um, different nations, different tribes. All of that are in here. We're all different walks of lives. So it doesn't matter um, if one of us come from uh, an affluent family, a rich family, or, or we've been exposed to all these things in the world. It doesn't matter. Or a person who comes in, somebody's poor or somebody, you know what I mean? We all are yas at the end of the day. And so we should treat each other with, with great respect, with great honor. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Uh, Exodus, I'm going to continue in Exodus, what is this, 23 now. Uh, 
excuse me, Deuteronomy 24 and verse 18. It says, but thou remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt. And Yahweh your Elohim redeemed you thence. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. Hallelujah. And going on. So let's talk briefly here about widow. Because he talked about the widows as well. They should take care of them as well. This Exodus 22 and 22. And it says, you shall not afflict any widow or any fatherless child. Y'all hear that? So no, we do not afflict them in any way. If you afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. Hallelujah. So see, we don't want to experience that. We don't want Yah's wrath to come down upon us um, for doing things. He, he clearly, and he clearly told us who he, you know, he didn't want us to afflict and who he's talking about. Verse 24, and my wrath shall wax hot. And I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall be widows. And your children shall be fatherless. Right? So look at this. It says, honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or, or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents for that is good and acceptable before Yah. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in Yah, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have re relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. Hallelujah. So moving on from now, I'm going to read this verse again. This is from uh, 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11. And it says, welcome one another without grumbling. Right? As each one has received a gift, serve one another as good trustees of the manifold favor of Elohim. Because if anyone speaks, let it be as the words of Elohim. If anyone serves, let it be as with the strength which Elohim provides, so that Elohim might be praised in it all through Yahweh, Yeshua, to whom belong the esteem and the rule forever. And, um, 3 John 1 and 5, it says, Beloved ones, do whatever you do faithfully, right, to the brethren and to strangers, right? You know, when I think about uh, uh, when we went, we visited uh, this, this little assembly in Hopkinsville, it was some years ago. We, uh, there was a whole bunch of us that went and, and passed the preach and, um, you know, the service went well. We praised, had a, an awesome time praising. And then, you know, the service was over. And then they had a meal afterwards. A lot of us couldn't get in there, so many of us had to go outside. And we waited outside. We fellowship. We, we ate a little bit. And then I had to go inside for something. And I heard this lady just, just speaking, and she was just, just murmuring all over the place. And Yeah, because there's all of them in there, and this and that and that. And I looked, and I was like, wow. You know, you know we used to be like that. We come from that. You know what I'm saying? And I identify with that. And I was like, man, that's, that's such a shame. You know, we come in here, you guys are supposed to serve us. And I'm not saying everybody that was like that. It was just that one individual. And, and for whatever reason, I went in there and I had to hear that. That really just, it, it just, it just did something to me. But it just showed me how we can never do nothing like that. Never do that. That's what you don't want to uh, pattern yourself after, right? So, especially when you have folk coming over, uh, they're visiting you, and, and it was an awesome, awesome message, too. You know, so the things that people gripe about and grumble about, you know, so you can tell that it's not a servant heart. It's not in her. You know what I mean? So, but this is welcome one another without grudging. I'm going to move on. I'm going to go to um, another thing is this. When you have a servant spirit, hospitality, hospitality should all, already be in you. And I think about the time I came here during God's, right? 
uh, Deacon Bell and Sister Ashley. They didn't know me. They didn't know me at all. I'm just a, 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 just a person that came in. I'm not even brother at this time because that's my first time meeting. They don't know me. But the way that they took care of me, you know, the way that, um, you know, Sister Ashley was there. I, I was baptized. She, she brought me towels and stuff. Deacon Bell, he was there to, to, to greet me. And, you know, they made me feel at home, you know, because I'll tell you this, on the, on the drive here, on the drive here, I think I made it to Lebanon, and I'm driving by myself. I had not met anybody. I had just been watching a few videos, and the enemy trying to tell me, man, what you doing going down there? You don't know the people. You don't know them folk, man. You better go back. You way out here in the middle of nowhere in the country. You better get your butt out of there. And if I'd have listened to that, man, I probably wouldn't be here right now, you know? But I came anyway, despite all of that, and I just pressed through. And the, the, the way the saints showed me love, they, 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 they opened their arms, they opened their homes, everything to me. It was beautiful. So, And that's how it should be. And you don't ever forget those kind of things. You know, those, those things really stay with you. And you want to reciprocate that as well. You know, when you see... Uh, you know, people come for the first time or whatever. You want to embrace them and, and make them feel comfortable. You know, some people stand off, so, you know, you got to respect folk at the same time. But, you know, at least you offered or extend or you should try to extend that, that uh, welcome unto them. Also, you know, Deacon Bell was sharing with me how years ago, you know, Pastor got on uh, the Saints here at Straightway. Uh, it was like a harsh rebuke for not, um, you know, welcoming people properly the way they should. But I tell you what, I'm sure they got that right quickly. Hallelujah. And uh, glory to the king. Another experience I had, you know, when I first, uh, I was just brother at the time. It was, this was maybe a year or two after my first visit here at Gotts. You know, Granny Barb, she uh, gave her home to myself and family. And at the time, it was just myself, Ajali, and uh, Hadassah, right? She was a little, little, little girl, a little baby. She gave us the, her whole house. She said, this is, what, this is the wood stove. This is how you use it. Here's this, this, and this. Make yourselves comfortable. Make yourselves at home. And then she left. For me, that blew me away. I was like, what? <laughs> this lady don't know us. Who, you know, who, who does that? But she did it, and she didn't grudge. She didn't complain. I didn't even really see her anymore. Hallelujah. The only time I saw her is when it was time for me to give her key back, and I thank her for that, and I expressed how much that meant to us, you know? So, and these are the things, like I'm saying, you don't ever forget these experiences and things like this, right? And that's how we should be one with another. She took care of us. She, she inconvenienced herself, right? Not looking for no praise, not looking, for, you know, what she can gain from it, but guess what? Just out of the kindness and the, and the, and the love of her for the most high, she did this. And, you know, we don't, we don't realize how these things could affect, you know, people, right? Uh, I remember this one brother. He came here, you know, it was his, he was visiting. And uh, I didn't find this out until after the fact, but he was real shy, right? And he, was, he didn't want to speak up. But I had a, I just discerned that he needed to talk. He needed to say something. So I left. I, it, this one we were still doing scripture study. I left and went. I was headed home. I got down the, down the road, and I just turned back around. I said, let me go back, man. It seemed like that brother wanted to tell me something, say something. Sure enough, he was sitting, still sitting. That was over here at the uh, old tabernacle. He was sitting in there. And I said, brother, you all right? Do you need something? He was like, yeah, man, I need some deliverance, man. I said, all right. So, you know, I talked with him, counseled with him, got some reinforcement. I'm glad I did. And uh, man, we had a nice long deliverance session that night. You know, although I was tired, I had been working all day, all of that. But still, I had to do that. I felt the need to do that, you know? And I'm not saying none of this trying to build myself up, prop myself up. I'm just trying to give examples. I'm trying to show y'all, right? But you know, this brother, he told me, he said, years later, he told me, he said, if you would have never did that, I don't think I'd still be here in the faith. He said, that changed my life, you know? Because he was so bound at the time, and he didn't know how to, to speak. He didn't know how to express, hey, I need help. I am severely bound. I need your help. He didn't even know how to do it, but just because I was just, a, you know, just, I saw that, you know, and I, I cared enough to turn around and, and go see, you know, 
it made all the difference in the world. And sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you may not even feel like it. You may be exhausted. I've heard Pastor Corey mention and give testimonies about that. He was exhausted. He was tired. But you know what? Saints needed him. And guess what he did? He still made himself available. And there was so much breakthrough, so much healing that came from that. If we just get up out of ourselves, right, and remember what we're doing, we're not here for our own pleasure. We're not here for, for people to just give to us. It's, more, it's better for us to give, right, than to receive stuff. So we, we need to you know, keep that in mind because think about Yeshua. What if he would have just gave up? I mean, when he was pressed and when all the things that was going on, what if he would have just stopped? You know what? I can't endure this. I don't want to take this. Where would we be at, right? And so we, we, we forget these things, right? But uh, hallelujah. Thank you for Yeshua. Glory to the King. I'm going to read a couple of things here. And... Uh, this is one of my favorite books, and uh, it's apocryphal. It's the Book of Tobit. Um, I know you like it too, right, Brother Darrell? Name the company after it, but it um, it's a lot of a lot of good good stories in here. But if we are going to be talking about benevolence, we're going to be talking about charity. How can we not bring up uh, Tobit, right, and and, and, the, and the stories and the accounts and the things that he did? He loved uh, Yah. And he showed it by what he did to his people, right? How he took care of, of, of Yah's people. So I'm going to go to uh, the first one I'm going to read. is going to be, uh, I'm going to start at chapter 1. Read verse 16. I know you might not have the Apocryphus, but just listen. Um, and it says, uh, and and in that in the time of Emmanuel, gave many I gave many alms to my brethren, and I gave my bread to the hungry, and my clothes to the naked. And if I saw any of my nation dead or cast about, excuse me, the wall of Nineveh, I buried him. Hallelujah. So, who we remember hearing about Abraham? What did he do? Didn't he give? Give of himself, give of his resource, and give the things that he had. They look at Tobit doing the same thing. He would give uh, of himself and give freely. And it says, and the king, uh, Sennacherib, had slain, in, if he slain any, when he was come and fed, fled from Judea, I buried them privately. For in his wrath, he killed many. But the bodies were not found when they were sought for of the king. And when one of the Ninevites went and complained of me to the king that I buried them and I hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. So this man openly put himself in danger, right, for the Israelites to make sure that they had a proper burial so that they were not laying on the streets all, you know what I'm saying? And just defile. He took this upon himself. I'm going to skip down to chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias, in the feast of Pentecost, which is the only feast of, of the seven weeks, there was a good dinner prepared me in the which I sat down to eat. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring what poor man soever you shall find out of your, out of your brethren, who is mindful of Yahweh. So key, he didn't just go get anybody, right? He didn't just go pick any person, no. He said, find one that is mindful of Yah, right? And you bring him in here. And lo, I tarry for you. And he basically said, I'll wait for you. But he came again and said, Father, one of our nation is strangled and is cast out into the marketplace. Then before I had taste, tasted of any meat, I started up and I took him up into a room until the going down of the sun. Then I returned and washed myself and I ate my meat in heaviness. So this man wasn't even concerned about eating. He was more concerned about getting his brother out of the streets, right? Talk about somebody who is uh, 
was selfless and, and not concerned with his own self. He couldn't even uh, enjoy a dinner, you know, during the feast because he was more concerned about Israel. And I want us to understand that and keep that in mind. I might keep saying the same thing, but it's important for us to be concerned about each other way more than ourselves, right? Way more than ourselves. And it says, um, yeah, then I returned to wash myself and I ate my meat in heaviness. Remembering the prophecy of Amos, as it said, your feast shall be turned into mourning and all your mirth into lamentation. Therefore, I wept, and after the going down of the sun, I went and made a grave, and I buried him. But my neighbors mocked me, and they said, This man is not yet afraid to be put to death for this matter. Who fled away? And yet, lo, he buried the dead again. So shoot, he wasn't even worried about it, and they knew it. They mocked him because they know he had, he had a history of doing this thing. So you mean to tell me you're going to keep putting yourself in danger? You're going to continue to do that? Who does that? Who really does that these days? Who put themselves on the line for Israel like that? Who does that continually for their brother? The same night also I returned from the burial and I slept by the wall of my courtyard. Hallelujah. And, you are, and being polluted... And my face was uncovered. And y'all know the story, what happened to him. How he was blinded. Hallelujah. From there, I'm going to go to the same book of Tobit, but I'm going to go to chapter 4 this time. Chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 5. And it says, my son, and this is him speaking to his son, Tobias. My son, be mindful of Yahweh, our Elohim, all the days, all your days. And let not your will be set to sin or to transgress his commandments. Do uprightly all your life long and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. For if you deal truly, your doings shall prosperously succeed to you and to all them that live justly. Give alms. Of your substance. And when you give alms, let not your eye be envious, neither turn your face from any poor, and the face of Yah shall not be turned away from you. If you have abundance, give alms accordingly. If you have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. For you lay it up a good treasure for yourself against the day of necessity. Hallelujah. So it's beneficial for him, is what he's telling his son, to give alms. And don't be afraid to give, right? And it says, verse 10, because the alms do deliver from death and suffer not to come into darkness. For alms is a good gift unto all that give they give it in the sight of the Most High. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. So uh, moving on from there, he, uh, it's much more that he, he, he instructed his son. It's much more that went on in the story. But he wanted to keep in mind and to, to let him know, don't, be, don't ever be afraid to give, right? Don't ever be afraid, even out of uh, abundance or if you have a little. Make sure you give. Don't be afraid to. Hallelujah. Um, Somebody come to mind, a brother come to mind, um, brother, y'all may know him, brother Hassan, and his name actually means generous king, right? Now, since I've been knowing this brother, he's always been that way. He's always been generous, always been giving, and the thing about it is he gets so much back in return, I mean, in abundance. Sometimes it'd be just overwhelmingly, it's, it's almost like unbelievable, because he'll call me and be like, man, Elder, guess what? Y'all blessed us again. This and this happened, and that, and I'm like, not surprised, because I know I already know how it is. It's just in him. He's always giving. Always. And I'm not trying to say his name to puff him up or any of that. Many of you know this, right? Y'all know how he is. And that's just how he is. I think about, you know, um, my mother-in-law, although she's not in the faith, she's always sending 
uh, gifts. She's always sending provisions and things up here for the saints, not only for us, but she's all, she always say, give this out, give this to the saints. She, she, she talked like that. She's not in, in the faith, but she knows enough to give, right? She knows enough to give unto Yah. And when people do that, you know, I still I pray for them, for Yah to bless them. Because we deal with a lot of, at times, we deal with folk out in the world that, uh, that come against us, right? And they're trying to, you know, prevent us from doing things. They hinder us. And they, they can be a pest at times. But whenever I run across somebody like that, that, that blesses us, I, send, I pray for them, you know, that y'all bless them. Glory to the king. Because, yeah, it's not a small thing. I don't take it to be a small thing. But anyway, moving on, it says, uh, we're going off to Romans. 12 and 9, it says, let love be without dissimulation, right? Let love be sincere, right? Whenever we do things, let it be sincere. Abhor that which is evil, right? Detest that which is evil. Dislike it. Hate evil. It says, cleave to that which is good, right? Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving Yah, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. You shall not, okay, we already went there. But it says here, it says, be ready for every good work. Titus 3, starting at verse 1, it says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, not to slander anyone, not to be quarrelsome, to be gentle, showing all meekness to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, led astray, serving various lust and pleasures, living in evil and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of Elohim, our Savior, towards man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion, right? Through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the set apart spirit. Glory to the king. So, hallelujah. Which he poured out on us richly through the Messiah, our Savior, that having been declared right by his favor, we should become heirs according to the expectation of everlasting life. Trustworthy is the word. And in this regard, I wish you to strongly affirm that those who believe in Elohim should keep their minds on maintaining good works. This is good and profitable to men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we, we should keep our, our minds and our hearts set on doing that which is good. Um, James 2 and 13, it says, For you shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Hallelujah. So righteousness, when we talk about righteous and being righteous, right? Um, the state of um, doing things that are acceptable in Yah's eyes, right? The way in which we uh, the way in which we attain in the, the approval of Yah, the way in which man may attain the state approved of Yah. Integrity, Virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking and feeling, and also acting. Right? So righteousness. So everyone in Israel, it, it, you know, when we do something, it doesn't need to be announced, right? Nobody, everybody don't have to know when you do a certain thing, right? You can do things privately. And in doing so, you're actually doing what the words, uh, what Messiah basically told us. You know, we don't have to let our right hand know what our left hand is doing or any of that. We don't have to be patted on the back. 
Because if you do shit, you already have your reward, right? But when you do things, you're supposed to be doing it privately. You don't have to let the whole world, hey, I just, I just did this and that. Nah. Because what are you doing it for? And who are you doing it for? You know? Are we seeking the praise of men? You know? Are we seeking that? Or do we, are we conscious of the fact that our Heavenly Father sees everything that we do? Not only do he see it, but he know why we are doing it. He know the intentions of our heart, right? So keep that in mind uh, when we do things, uh, no matter what we do. Because no matter what we do, whether we eat or drink, we do it all as unto the most high, correct? And you know, it's a sad thing when people feel like, okay, I got to do this, or I got to compete with that, or that person got their name called, and this one got their name. It's not about having your name called, right? We need to be thinking about Yah and what he said, well done good and faithful servant. We need to be looking for that, right? I'd much rather have that than to never have my name called here on earth. Hallelujah. And to never and to never have anybody know what I do. But for those who I've done it for, they know, right? The father, he knows, right? So we got to get that out of our minds when, we, when we're doing things to be seen a man, Right? It, and, and to be, to be, some of you think you ain't even serving Yah if you don't have your name called. But I tell you what, man, we better get out of that mindset. You know, we better get out of that mindset because Yah sees these things, right? He wants the praise. He wants the honor. He wants the glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we want to be so, you know, elevated and, and so important these days. Where, where are the lowly? Where are the humble? Where are the meek in the earth? Hallelujah. Where are they? But um, Matthew 6 and 1, it says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Hallelujah. But when you do alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand doeth, that your alms may be in secret, and your father which seeth in secret himself shall reward you openly. Hallelujah. And I say that all the time, but like how many times we really consider that? Okay, whatever we're doing, it don't matter what it is we're doing. Do we not realize Yah is, is, is watching all of that? He can see every bit of it. And so much so, even the thought, even the intentions of why we're doing what we're doing. And I'm not even, not even saying if we, we're doing something for someone, just whatever we're doing, going about life, doing these different things here, the thoughts that we have, the things that we agree to, the things that we cast down, the things that, you know, that we actually say out of our mouths, all of these things. Why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, why are we doing this? Are we considering Yah at all, right? So it's easy to get by on man. It's easy to get by, oh, he ain't gonna see me. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't catch that. They didn't see what I did. But no, you're missing the whole thing. Yah sees it all, hallelujah. Um, so talking about alms and things, so I used to, um, you know, I, when I, before I even found Straightway, I used to, uh, coming out of the Baptist church, I used to go and feed the, the homeless, right? So there was this one particular time, they had this really, what you would, they would call like a mega church, and they came out there. So we would come out there and set up. It was myself at first for a while, and then this other guy wanted to join with me. And we just went out there with tables and pans and, you know, wrapped in aluminum foil. I, had to, I grilled some stuff. I just wanted to go out there and, and give the people a meal. That's it, right? So this one particular uh, Sunday, first day, this whole group came, and it was like a whole production. I mean, they came out there with fancy chafing dishes, tablecloths. That was nice. That was cool. And no, you should do, do, you know, do it up when you do it. But the intention behind it is what I'm getting at. Do you, can, would you believe that them people didn't even want to eat their food? They didn't even want to touch it. Because, see, they were taking pictures, and they were, you know, all of this other stuff to be seen the man. Even, I thought that was ironic because all of our food was gone. They had them taken all of our food, but they didn't even want to touch those people's food. And they had it in abundance, and they had all the bells and whistles. Even those people could see that nah, something ain't right with that. You know, I ain't touching that. I'm not dealing with that. 
But yeah, it can be seen a man why you do certain things, man. It's 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 obvious. Um, Proverbs twenty four and twelve says, "If you say, see, we did not know this, would not he who weighs the hearts discern it? He who watches over your life, would he not know it? And shall he not repay man according to his works?" That's what I'm saying. You don't think Yah sees what's going on? You don't think he knows? It says also, a thing we got to do is uh, be careful. I know y'all read, uh, heard, heard uh, the verse, and it talks about being careful to entertain strangers, right? Because we can uh, entertain angels unawares, right? Verse 15. Um, there's another account in the, in the uh, Apocrypha here in Tobit, uh, chapter 12, where the angel Raphael pretty much reveals himself, and uh, he lets... He lets, uh, to, he lets uh, Tobias and Tobit know who he is and what he was doing, right? There's been a couple of times where I had uh, encounters with people. And I had this one guy, he told me, he said, you know what? He said, I come out here every day. I come out here every day to find me an angel. I come and I, I look for an angel. And I'm thinking to myself, nah, I know what the word says. You're an angel. You know, because uh, there's been a couple uh, instances where, you know, a person may look, you know, just like a like a, a bump, homeless and down on, on everything and just out. It's easy to walk past them and just think, oh, what the hell with them, right? But uh, we just never know who we're dealing with, right? Let me get this. Uh, here it is right here, 12. Y'all all right out there, Israel? Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to start at, I'm going to just go ahead and start at verse 1. And it says, Then Toby called his son Tobias, and he said unto him, My son, see that the man have his wages. And he's talking about the guy that went along on a journey with his son, right? And he says, My son, see that the man have his wages, which went with you, and you must give him more. And Tobias said unto him, O father, it is not harm to me to give him half of those things which I have brought. For he had brought me again to you in safety and made whole my, life, my wife and brought me the money and likewise healed me, healed you. Then the old man said, it is due unto him. So he called the angel and he said unto him, take half of all that you have brought and go away in safety. Then he took them both, talking about Tobias and Tobit, and apart and said unto them, Bless Yah, praise him and magnify him, and praise him for the things which he had done unto you. In the sight of all that live, it is good to praise Yah, and to exalt his name, and honorably to show forth the works of Yah. Therefore, be not slack to praise him. It is good to keep close the secret of a king, but it is honorable to reveal the works of Yah. Do that which is good, and no evil shall touch you. Prayer is good with fasting, and alms, and righteousness, right? A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. For alms doeth deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. And it says, verse 10, but they, but they that sin are enemies to their own life. Surely I will keep close nothing close nothing from you. For I said it was good to keep close the secret of a, of a king. But that if but if it were honorable to reveal the works of Yah. Now therefore when you did pray and Sarah your daughter-in-law, I did bring the remembrance of your prayers before the Holy One. And when you did bury the dead, I was with you likewise. So he didn't even know that, that this man was with him, right? 
Verse 13, and when you did not delay to rise up and leave your dinner to go and cover the dead, your good deed was not hid from me, but I was with you. And now Yah has sent me to heal you and Sarah, your daughter-in-law. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. Then they were both troubled, and they fell upon their faces. For they feared, but he said unto them, Fear not, for it shall go well with you. Praise Yah therefore, for not of any favor of mine, but by the will of Yah I came, wherefore praise him forever. All these days I did appear unto you, but I did not neither eat nor drink. But you did see a vision. Now therefore give Yah thanks, for I go up to him that sent me, but write all things which are done in the book. And when, the, and when they arose, they saw him no more. Then they confessed the great and wonderful works of Yah, and how the angel of Yah had appeared unto them. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. He, he just never know. And it's good that, you know, he, he constantly saying it. He's constantly talking to his son and telling them about doing good, right? And doing good works and giving alms and, and, and doing good deeds. Hallelujah. So there's a reason why. We just never know. Even us. We, we never know who, who we come in contact with, who's watching what we do. All of these things, right? Um, as we talk about going forward, forward heaping coals upon uh, a fire, upon others' heads, Romans 12 and 20 says, Therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. So I know that sounds, that sounds crazy, don't it? To, 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 to do that unto your enemy, Right? With our enemy, we, we want to get at our enemies, right? We want to deal with them and, and, and finish them off and let them be done with. We got to remember what Yah said. He said, what? Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Is that right? Right? But we want to be the one, the executioner. We want to be the one to kill. We want to be the one to uh, stay in Yah, be in Yah, uh, stay in his stead. Romans 12 and 20 says, um, 21, excuse me. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with evil. Good, all right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read this one. This is uh, the account with the the, the Assyrians. <clears throat> Excuse me, with the Syrians. This is uh, Second Kings six. We're gonna start at verse uh, eighteen here, and it says, "And when they came down, see, they had a uh, the, the Syrians were." were the king of Syria, he warred against Israel, right? And he fought against them. But check out what happened in this instance. It says, and when, he, and when they came down to him, Elisha, he prayed unto Yah, and he said, smite this people, I pray you, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Master, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And Yahweh opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? So he wanted to know, you want, me, you want me to deal with them now? Shall I kill them? And look what he said. He says, and he answered, you shall not smite them. Would you smite those whom you have taken captive with the sword and with the bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go 
to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drank, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of, the Syri of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. So they learned that day, right? They learned that day. But also, you see how the king wanted to kill him, but he was like, Elisha said, no, no, don't kill him. See, there's a time for everything up under the sun, right? Hallelujah. There's a time to kill. I mean, there's a time for peace. There's a time for war, you know? But in this instance, it wasn't that time to do that, right? And I mean, they could have easily killed him. They had him right where they wanted him, but they didn't do it. So even, I even think about King David. Sometimes he had to even ask Yah, Yah, can I go up and, and, and fight against these people? And Yah will give him permission to, right? And it was other times where Israel went up against other nations and Yah told him, nope, don't do it because I'm not with you, right? These people are going to deal with you. They're going to um, over, over, overtake y'all, so don't do it. Also about being in tune with Yah and, and what uh, he has for us. Um, as I said, there's a time for everything. Under the sun. We've got to pick our battles wisely. Um, when we think about Yahshua, right, and how he, he did things, when he was reviled, he reviled not, right? He didn't always go and just, you know, deal with people harshly and, and just end them, right? He could have, but he didn't, right? He was trying to teach us a certain thing. Uh, everything ain't about war. Everything ain't about, and there are times where we have to fight and we got a war. Hallelujah. Especially when we're dealing with one another. I don't know what this spirit is and this thing where we want to be done with each other. We want to, you know, we may not say it, but it's, it's a, the things that we do, how we murder one another, you know, how we kill each other within and we try to make things miserable for each other you know we speak things about each other you know it is 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 a bad thing and we always thinking about all oh, going to war and this but we go to war here spiritually you know within the body is a war going on hallelujah so we got to get out of that uh Israel i want to play a uh an audio clip here in just a, in just a second if i can get it up on here um But I'm moving, moving on um, to another thought here. And this is just about honor, right? Uh, honoring uh, those who are over you, honoring and reverencing um, leaders, um, the, the hoary-headed, um, the aged women, all of these things. Um, Romans 13 and 1, it says, Let every soul be subject uh, to the higher powers, for there is no power but of Yah. The powers that powers that be are ordained of Yah. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of Yah, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for Yah's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him. For the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of Yah, that with well-doing you may put, the, put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of Yah. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear Yah, Honor the king. Hallelujah. So, you know, since I've been in this ministry, there has never been a time, and I'm going to just say this, never been a time where it's been okay to dishonor people, uh, disrespect people, and I'm talking about those who are without and even those who are within. Um, you know, as, as things have been going on lately, I've been seeing people, you know, dishonor uh, folk. And, you know, let the pastors do what they do. That's what they're there for, right? They know exactly what they're doing. But when I see brothers and sisters out there being disrespectful and saying things and doing things that they shouldn't do, that's, that's a problem because it should never be that way. And it's never been acceptable, never have been. One, uh, one of the things that, uh, when I look back at, uh, you know, with King David, right, and Saul, when they had uh, the, the, the things going on with, with each other. We know that 
King David would never dishonor Saul, right? Even though, you know, he did all of the things that he did, he wasn't favored no more in eyes, Yah's eyes. Yah had taken his hands off of him. He tried to kill him multiple times. He did all of these things. He never once dishonored him, right? Because this here is still Yah's anointing, right? And so he did not do, do that. And I see nowadays we, we have no fear to do that. You know, we have no fear to dishonor, to disrespect, None of that stuff. We're just running around just doing whatever, right? And that shouldn't be. So like I say, let the leaders do what they do. Y'all don't do that, all right? Hallelujah. But um, it says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder woman as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity, right? In regards to the hoary-headed men, Leviticus 19 and 32, you shall rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear Yah, I am the master. Proverbs 16, 31, the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. Now we have quite a few uh, older hoary-headed men in the ministry, right? And um, I think we need, we need to uh, bestow upon them a little bit more honor, you know, and, and, and a little more respect, you know, for they are, because they are in the way of righteousness, right? A lot of us, we don't have what we would, you know, call like our grandfathers and great-grandfathers and things like that as we did in the world. But we should embrace them and uh, respect them and honor them in that way. Because, you know, I remember uh, Elder Bill, Bill years ago, when he came to the ministry, he was so um, intrigued with the fact that there were so many young men in the ministry. And he felt, you know, like, man, there's so many young men. It's nothing that I can teach y'all. A lot of y'all are uh, wise for your age. And he was like, I wish I knew this a little bit sooner. But uh, one of the things that I told him was I, was, I said, listen, uh, you know, Elder, it's so much that you can um, impart. It's so much wisdom. You, you've been here longer than we, we have. You have a lot to offer. You know what I mean? It's a lot that you can offer us. So be at peace. And, you know, I'm just grateful for you. And I, I talked to him about him and it kind of helped him and it comforted him to let him know, you know, you know, you, you are important. You are valued in this uh, in this ministry. Um, we, we lost the elder bill years ago, but, you know, such a sweet soul. Hallelujah. So glory to the king. Just all that I'm saying is just just honor, you know, those. And, and another thing I like to, to do is just keep them lifted up. Right. Um, in their old age, see, we're not there. Right. We, we, we don't experience the things that they experience. We don't know what they go through, but it'll be good for us to just lift them up, you know, pray for them that the father, you know, uh, just gives them the strength, you know, day in day um, that they don't lose their faith. Right. And that they just continue on in this journey. You know, whatever is laid upon your heart to pray for them, just keep them in mind is what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So we're grateful to have that. They are jewels. Hallelujah. And I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm grateful for, them. you know, even as a when I was younger, I used to always I used to like to be around older men. Um, it didn't matter what age I was. I always wanted to be around somebody older, you know, even to this day. So I'm, I'm grateful for them. And I just want to say that. Glory to the King. I want to bear with me just for a second, because I, I was trying to get this played over the uh, over the. See how this comes. Hold on one second. And bear with me, uh, Mother. This is your voice. So just endure. I know how it is listening to your own voice. But this is microphone number one. And just listen to this, this cry from my mother as she uh, as she speaks. And I believe all Israel needs to hear it. All right, that, that mic is on. So listen. Always and for all things, hey, I, I know that this is to mature us, to better us, to get us to a perfect place of maturity for the time that we have to come. I don't take it lightly. The times that we are in, we are in the end. And I don't want to see any of my brothers and sisters miss out on what is to come. We've got a bad time coming ahead of us, and we're fainting in the green. Our maturity.
maturity has to come up to a level that we are collective and united with one another so that we can be ready for this tribulation that we are about to embark upon. Yah is not playing games with us. This is serious. These are serious times. Get all the evil and wicked and hash out all of the things that you need to to get spiritually mature and get ready for this because we can't be babies going into this. We need to be adults. We need to be mature adults to face what is coming. What are you going to do if you're by yourself? Is the word in you enough to keep you? Are you going to complain then? Who are you going to complain to? Let's mature. Let's mature daughters of Zion. We've got young ones behind us coming, watching us, seeing how we act, seeing how we carry ourselves. And that's the pattern that they're going to follow. Make sure that they have something stable, something holy and righteous to look at. So although she was speaking to the sisters, right? But I believe that we all need to take heed to that. Is that right? Um, to draw, one of the things she said we need to do, uh, hash it out. Hash out these things right now. Get all of this stuff out right now. Because there's a time coming upon us, right? And we don't want to find ourselves, it'd be a, it'd be a shame, you know, when we bickering and fighting and, and, and things uh, have gotten worse and worse. We find ourselves in tribulation and we hadn't gotten these things sorted out yet. that will be a shame because we need to be working on those things right now. We need to become more unified and, and, and together, right? Y'all agree? Because it's, it's scary what we see already out there. We see that there is no love out there in the world. We see how it's waxing worse and worse. It's getting cold. But what about here? See, you know, we think about we, we when we think about that verse, right, we, we automatically, I'm sure, we think about the world, right? And what's going on out there. We see that, right? But how many times do we consider what's going on here inside the body, right? How many times do we really think about it, right? How thing, how people's hearts are becoming cold and, 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 and towards one another. You know, how we it's so easy for us to fight and bicker one to another, right? It's there. We got to work on this thing, and this, and we need to deal with it, right? This is real. This is not not for play. Why did the Father bring us? He bring us here so that we can take each other out. He brought us here so that we can just do each other wrong and treat each other wrong, say things to each other that we should never even say. Things shouldn't even enter our minds. The things that we say and do to one another, right? Husbands and wives, right? You think it's all right for you to dishonor and disrespect each other, right? It's not. It's not at all. Children, for you to dishonor your parents, your, 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 those who are, are, are taking care of you, who are over you, right? All of these things. Hey, we got to get it together as a people, right? Israel as a nation. Hallelujah. So we don't want to find ourselves. If we can't take care of one another right now, what, what's going to happen then, right? And the way that we're living right now, many of us, there's no way we're going to be able to take care and look after each other, man. The enemy is already de destructive from within and causing havoc. But hallelujah. Um, so all of that I was saying, right, and, and all of that, I, that I've, I've gone over the different accounts and the different things, I think it can be summed up in these next few uh, verses that I'm going to read. So in Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to start at verse 31. And listen to me, Israel, just listen, all right? And you know this, you, you've heard all of this, but just, just hear, hear me out. And when the son of Adam comes in his esteem and all the set-apart messengers with him, then he shall sit on the throne of his esteem. And all the nations shall be gathered before him. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the sovereign shall say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the rain prepared for you. For from the foundation of the world, 
For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous shall answer him, saying, Master, when did we see you hungry? And when? And when did we see you hungry and we fed you? Or thirsty and we gave you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and we took you in? Or naked and clothed you? When did we do these things? Huh? That's what they're asking. And when did we see you sick or in prison? And we came to you. And the sovereign shall answer and say to them, Truly, I say to you, in so far as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Huh? He shall then also say to those on the left hand, Go away from me, you accursed ones into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his messengers. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also shall answer him, saying, Master, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not serve you? Then he shall answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, in so far as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. Hallelujah. So you see why it's so important to do good and to do good one, to one another, right? No matter what it is, how small or how great. And this is not about food. Don't think about food. That's just one example. That's just one instance, right? But he also mentioned when I was sick, you know, did anybody, when y'all were sick, who came to see you, right? When you were, you know, when you didn't have a place to go, right? All of these things. And believe it or not, we have all of these different instances that come up in Israel. Trust me, they come up. And people choose whether or not they're going to honor that, the person, keeping Yah in their, in, their fore, in their mind at the foresight and know who, is, who they're doing it to, or whether or not they're going to do it. So these are real things. And they're not just on the pages of this book, like cliche, or oh, we've heard of these before. No, this is real life. These are things that are actually happening. So saints are choosing not to clothe one another. They're choosing not, right, to, 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 to feed one another. They're choosing not to entertain those strangers, right? They're choosing to do all of these things. But I'm here to tell you, y'all sees it all. Y'all knows what's going on. And we're going to have hell to see you, right? We're not doing it as unto the most high, right? We're thinking of ourselves. We're being selfish, right? We're being evil and vindictive, right? We're not giving a shit about nothing, about nobody but ourselves. So we better watch that. And it's, it's sickening, and it really did, I'm going to tell you the truth, a, a particular situation really did hurt me because I couldn't believe that Israelites are doing this to one another right now, here in this time right now. With all the preaching that we get, with all of the admonishment that we get, all of these things, the rebuke, the correction, we still have not figured out as a whole, as a whole, and I'm not saying everybody, how to truly love one another, how to truly give of ourselves for one another, right? Man, looking at others' necessities and their care over our own. Compassion. Remember those words? Compassion, right? Warmth, care. Where is that at? So as I close this thing out, I'm going to read a, uh, just a, a few more verses to you. Romans 12 and 9, it says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another, 
with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving Yahweh, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense not Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Right? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith Yahweh. Therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. If a man say, I love Yah, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love Yah, whom he have not seen? Hallelujah. That's the question. How can he do it, saints? How can he? It's telling us right here that he can't. Right? And he were, we're lying. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth Yah love his brother also. Hallelujah. Would y'all agree? Bear with me here, girl. One more thing I need to uh, I read here, please. Hallelujah. And it says, Simon Peter, a servant, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Yah and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you the knowledge of Yah and of Jesus our Master, according as his divine power that according to his divine power that he had given us all things that pertained unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise, promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Master Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. sure excuse me. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. You hear that? For so, at, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. So, man, we, we, uh, we definitely got a lot of work to, we need to do. Glory to the King. Preparing our hearts, preparing ourselves, um, being um, lovers of one another, and in compassion and, and in great charity. Hallelujah! The times that are approaching ahead, are, they, they, we can see that things are getting bad; they're getting worse. Hallelujah! But we need to increase and draw nigh unto Yah, 
as his people, as his true people. And everything that we do, we need to know that we're doing it as unto the most high. Hallelujah. We're not looking for fame. We're not looking for attention and notoriety and all of these other things, right? Those are distractions. And we, we, we better be careful that when we do things, that we're not seeking the appraisal of men and approval of men. Like I said earlier, Yah wants, Yah deserves all the praise, all the glory, right? And we cannot at all um, be putting anything before him, right? Nothing and no one. I don't care who it is, wherever they are, whoever you're seeking the, the, the approval of or whatever that is, Yah is Yah and Yah alone, right? And so he's not going to share his glory with another. So we better make sure we're not making idols and putting anything before him. So um, that's even ourselves, right? Um, so bless you all, Israel. Um, I just wanted to you know, come here and speak these words to you. And I uh, pray that you're blessed. Hallelujah. And then and, and I'm going to say this before we go. I know it's been some difficult times, um, but we got to learn how to really endure, you know, and then endure until the end. It's not a time to faint. It's not a time to fall and, and come up with all these excuses and murmur and complain and, and looking for an exit. You know, where's your strength? You know, because if we faint in the day of adversity, then our, our strength is small. Hallelujah. This is perfect time for us to, to, to cry out to, to the Father, draw nigh unto him. Hallelujah. Continue to praise him. What did, what did King David do? Didn't he have to encourage himself? He had to encourage himself and he had to learn to. That's what we need to do. Learn to encourage ourselves through all that we're going through. Make sure that we have our eyes set and focus on the Messiah. Hallelujah. We have to. I remember when I was going through a difficult time, Elder Becker, he just kept telling me, keep your eyes on the Messiah. Focus on him. And that's what got me through, focusing on that. Instead of focusing on all the things around me, what's wrong, went wrong, and what's this and that, just focus on Yeshua. Hallelujah. And we can do the same thing right here and right now. Hallelujah. This is not the time to faint, as I said. So be strong, Israel. Be encouraged in Yah and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. So bless you all. Let us uh, stand. Lord to the King, Most High Yah, Heavenly Father Yah, we bless you this day, Father. Once again, giving thanks to you, giving praise, giving honor and all glory to your holy name, Father. But we can do nothing without you, Father, and we realize this. We pray that, Father, we go forth, Father, being um, do better as a people, as a nation, love one another, caring for one another, Father. Father, considering you in everything that we do, Father. We bless your holy name and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Bless y'all, Israel. Uh-oh, look at him looking.